Hey, what's up, y'all? How you doing? Welcome to another edition of Bamboo and Friends. Um, we're going to start the show today, but we're going to first uh, give respect to my brother. I am unlimited. Um, step your shirt up. going to kick this uh show off today we got a few things going on today and we got a couple of mishaps here and there but that's okay you know that's how it goes in the world today you know what i mean things don't always go your way but you just keep on pressing on and that's what we're going to do today all right so uh, today we're going to have a little conversation about um the role that i played in the movie Peach street and then we have a guest coming in if you can get in uh, hopefully you can get in um, a gentleman that has been in the industry dancing, break dancing for a few years, and we're gonna have him come on. And he's going to, um, you know, uh, give his his insight of what what it was like to be uh, in that 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 time that era, which was an amazing time to be. Uh, let's take a look. At what's going on, on Facebook? Because I know you guys are always plugged in on Facebook. Um, what's going on? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna link up with everybody today and um, get them started. I'm not gonna talk too much today. Not too much talk because I'm gonna edit. So sometimes I take a look at some of my old shows and I'm like, okay, didn't have to do that. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Since we are still um, waiting for our guests to come in, um, this is young lady, her name is Naya Nicole, and she is a up and coming artist and she sings and she's she does very well for herself. So we support her in, you know, in whatever she does, we try to give her insight on how to get to the next level, but we definitely, show her love and we're going to show her love right now ladies and gentlemen um we're going to pull her up but we didn't all right let's see what we do here all of this stuff will be edited i've come to the conclusion that i'm going to edit you know that that's a better way to go here she goes naya nicole ladies and gentlemen with her new song
know Am I up or am I dreaming? I can't tell if I'm sleeping I don't wanna disappear nowhere Except for in my music, yeah It's my night in the studio Yes, she is a blessing, yo. She is a blessing, yo. That girl is doing her thing. I got to give her much props for that, man. Much props for her. Because, you know, I mean, you know, kids could be doing other things right now, you know, but she just, she you knows she picks to, to be doing something a little bit more positive, you know, which is cool. You know, you got to, you know, got to give her respect on that one. Um. I don't know what's going on here. All right, we got my brother El Elvin in the building. Stand by, my brother. Okay, I don't know what happened here. We must have did something. Okay. No more am I going to continuously talk at the same time while I'm trying to do this because, you know, I'm just going to shut up. You know what I mean? I'm just going to be quiet. Talk at the same time yeah. while I'm trying to do this because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just going to shut up. You know what I mean? All right, so we got that down pat. Be quiet. This show will be edited. I'm realizing that I need to start editing the show and so what we're going to do right now you guys are going to witness an actual taping of the show and then i'm going to edit it just to make it a little more better because i'm not too happy with you know some of the um things that we got going on with um uh, the um, process anyway listen um we talked earlier today stand by elvin i'll pull you right in in a second all right um we talked earlier today about hip-hop and this is a, a conversation that I don't know if a lot of people is, is eligible to talk about because some people really haven't really been in the trenches um, and seen what I've seen. Now, when I talk about hip hop, we talk about hip hop, we talk, we're talking about something that goes back into the 70s. You know, the way the world was in the 70s, how the streets were, the burned down buildings, um, you know, young people needing a, a way, a place 
a thing, something to do, something positive to do, coming together, you know, um, bombing trains, seeing your tag um, from one side of uh, uh, the Bronx all the way down to Brooklyn. It, it was, it is, and was a, a, a great time. So we're going to talk about that. Today, I have a special guest to come in to help me with this. Um, my brother, Elvin, and uh, we're going to introduce him. We're going to have him come in, but we know we always do it a certain way on this show. You know, we always give um, the flowers to the people that have been in the industry. We're going to give him his flowers today, too, as well. Um, ladies and gentlemen, coming to the platform right now, a young man that has been entangled in the, the whole lifestyle of hip hop break dancing, um, graffiti, um, very skilled and very talented. Ladies and gentlemen, I need all of my white people. Where, where's my white people at? I need you guys to put your hands together. What's up, my brother? How you doing today? You doing well? I can't hear you too well. Okay, your microphone, maybe it's out. Maybe your volume's low. Something's covering your microphone. Yeah, it seems like something's covering your mic. Like you can't, it's not uh, loud. How about now? Yeah, when you got closer, it seemed like it's a little bit better. We really can't hear you too well. So how you doing today? I'm doing fine, Marie. I'm doing fine, Marie. That's good, that's good, that's good. Um. I don't, first, I want to get the audio together and audio right so that we could be able to have that conversation. So um, if you have any headphones. OK, ladies and gentlemen, while he's doing that, we're going to go to commercial, right? Because there's a couple of people. I need you. All right, we'll mute him for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, my boy Merrick, he's in the place and he does his video stuff and he, he really does his thing. So. Listen, check them out. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Merrick and Kia from MK Photography.
you know, being that it was a hot summer and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and those uh, back then they didn't have fans inside the equalizers, the amps. And uh, we had to use a fan, as you see right there, which is yeah. Great. Yeah, you had to you had to keep it. You had, you had to keep the equipment cool, especially on those hot, humid nights. Yeah, that definitely is a fact. Definitely a fact. I'm gonna be um, like I said, I'll be throwing up some uh, um, different things. And um, uh, let me ask you, what does this remind you of? That reminds me of the floor master. The floor masters. Um, they they used to teach us us young kids in in in, in the neighborhood karate, gymnastics, and um they might have wore um gang jackets, but to me they was all they was all kind. I mean the young lords, black um the black spades, were um in my neighborhood, and um they taught us karate and gymnastics. They taught us dancing, and um it might look like you know. People might get the wrong perception and look at the gang jackets in the neighborhood, um, but these guys are strictly, strictly into art, you know, and they encouraged it. They encouraged us to go to continue with our arts, you know, and th and that's what this picture definitely reminds me of. Do you, are you looking at the way the streets were? When you look at the streets like that, the streets of the Bronx, what is that? What is that? How does that make you feel? You know, it, it's it was. We didn't look at it like it was bad when we was growing up, you know. We could we could look back at it now, and 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 the first words that come to your mind is ghetto, slum, gangs, um, stray dogs, uh, deserted cars. But um, you know, th there was a lot of there was a lot of love, and uh, we built we built um, us uh, all, everybody in the neighborhood was like family, you know. So like. Uh, you know, it, it it brings a lot of a lot of memories. Brings yeah. a lot of memories, but um, yeah, no, that's a, definitely a fact. Um, that definitely brings a lot of memories. You know, and I, you know, I just wanted to basically uh, kind of get your perception of what you think, you know, and how you feel when you see these these kind of pictures. I'm gonna throw up another picture, and I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna ask you, what is it? Wow, but we was definitely doing battles. Um. Growing up, I mean, it was all for fun. Certain blocks had their certain DJs and had their certain B boys, and um, and we were in the summer times. We would walk from block to block in search of j summer jams, and um, we would battle the the local block, you know. And this reminds me, um, uh, because it was the same type of backdrop: the graffiti on the walls, DJ speakers. Beat suits, and um, our battles really never turned to fights. It was all for fun. We knew each other, and um, I enjoyed very much dancing. And um, I refused to lose. And when I used to dance in 112th Street, and I met a lot of, I met a lot of good people, a lot of old friends. And that's what this picture reminds me of. Yeah, I mean battles. You know, I think, like I said, I was telling, I was telling the viewers early. I was saying to them that, you know, back then it was a time of struggle. There was um, a, a, um, racism going on in the communities, and you know, I, I don't know if you realize that there was a, a heavy, heavy presence of racism that was still present at that time. Do you remember that? Yes, very much. And, and, very and much. I think at this time because I mean, all of the Bronx seemed like it was burnt down. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of remembering that people used to say that the, the landlords were burning down the buildings. Am I right? Am I right about that? Yeah, I mean, at one point it was like every night buildings were burning. I mean, it'll be nighttime and it might be six buildings on one block simultaneously burning and it would look like it's daytime. Um, and, and, and this is like 11, 12 o'clock at night, so much fire. And, um, yeah, they did say that they was um, doing the service jobs, burning the buildings down. And, um, and, and it, it is a fact that's was, that, that was happening. They was paying all certain people to burn buildings down. Um, at the, at the time I was young, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what was going on. There were a lot of buildings. We made clubhouses. We had our pitching coops. We hung out in these buildings, and um, 
my friends became my family. You know, most of us were sing most of us were growing up single, single parent. A lot of us have fathers missing our lives. Um, my father was in the Vietnam War. Um, he he was gone for a couple of years, came back, and um, you know, it wasn't good. You know, um, but he um, back, he came back kind of messed up. Yeah, he came back. Um, he was a cameraman. He got a job for CBS. And going to the parties, you know, he started indulging in um, recreation of drugs, and yeah. it and it and it changed him, and it changed the structure of my household. Um, I didn't look, I didn't look at him as a father figure because of the things he was doing. And yeah, um, I think that a lot of kids were looking at their fathers like that, but you know, we don't really know the pain that they were feeling inside. You know what he what they went through in Vietnam War, the Vietnam Vietnam War. Not only that, there was pain on the streets back then. Um, you know, like I said, single parents. Uh, you, you know, it was just a lot of um, people trying to belong to something. You know, it was it was it was it, like you said, everybody had a certain kind of love. It, it was a it was a clique of hip hoppers. It's like like graffiti artists. There were like a clique of graffiti artists that would come to, that would be together all the time, right? You know. Yes. You do, you do graffiti yourself, right? Very much. Okay. Very much. I, I had a clip of I think I had a clip of, of you. I think did you have a clip on YouTube? I believe I do. Yes. Of you doing some graffiti. Yes. Okay. Um, real quickly, um, let me know what, what that is. Where is that at? So I can have my team look it up. Oh, on, on YouTube? Yeah. Um, Elvin Rodriguez at YouTube at YouTube at YouTube. Elvin, Elvin, Rod Elvin Rodriguez. Okay, all right. We're gonna put pull that up because I looked at that earlier and I was like, you know, that's when I said to myself, you know, I said this brother, you know, um. He's really out here, you know. He's, he's. I see your drips. I see. I see your work. I see your work. And um, you know, I think that is a really good thing. Um, also, let me let me ask you a question. You have you? Which, yes. So he was. The, um, what's going on with this nine eleven thing that I see you in? Yeah. Well, um, at the time I was going. To, I was attending Bowman Manhattan Community College. Uh -huh. Um, I was writing a book, and and in my strange mind, I thought if I write it, because I wrote pretty good, I spell good. Um, I thought if I write a really good book about the culture, not me, the culture, what I witnessed through my eyes, that it might turn some heads, and it, and and someone might want to turn it into a movie. But I knew nothing about production, right. so I I made it. I I, I um. Enrolled in Baltimore Community College for film, and um, I have 48 credits. I was on the dean's list. I was a, ma a master in the camera, storyboards, editing, both audio and visual. And um, on September 11th, I, I was going to school in the nighttime, full time. I was working during the day, full time, and from nine to five, and then I would walk like six blocks to school because I was working in Chinatown and Bowen Manhattan Community College is like a block away from the World Trade Center. So um, when I was working, I, was, we, I, I witnessed this first, the first and second plane hit the building. Right. And um, so the commission, we had to wait for a commissioner to let us go. Or, I was a city employee for child support enforcement. So once they let us go, I said, I just made the dean's list. And with that, I could get a triple C camera and I could take the camera home. I don't have to film in BMCC on P BMCC grounds. So I was excited about getting a, this camera. I could take it home. Right, right. So I went, I went to the school. School was closed. I'm standing in front of the building. Long story short, I felt the sidewalk shake. And 15 seconds later, the building was falling. I was one block away. Um, I ran two and a half blocks. I thought I was safe until that dust storm came, that big giant dust cloud came and started chasing me for another two blocks. And um, it hit me and knocked me out. 
and I was knocked out to after the that was the first tower that fell down. I didn't wake up to after the second tower survival team came in. That's the survival team, the five men, they had a team come in and they found me. I think I was like three and a half, like three blocks away from the World Trade Center. And um it's a shockwave injury to the brain. Um I forgot I was an artist. I forgot how to study in school. I forgot. Um, I knew that I loved to dance and I loved to graffiti, but I forgot everything. And um, no one believed what I was going through. I was having a lot of seizures, so nightmares. Let me, let me let me ask you this. Um, so were you saying that you were next to you were next to the building? I was standing right in front of the entrance, Maurice. I seen the five minutes. The, the five minutes that are running out the World Trade Center right at me, like it was like uh, less than a block away. And after I felt, after I felt something, all the firemen, like doubt, it was like hundreds of firemen running out the building, but they was running right towards me. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I, I just, you know, I just took off. I started running, and when, when I was running. I look. I I heard the people with a big gasp, like, 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 picture like three thousand people taking a big gasp in. That's the sound that I heard, um, and that was the last thing I heard. I, I mean, um, I ran. I ran like two and a half blocks, like I said, and I thought I was safe. I was standing and getting my breath, but then the dust storm came around the corner right towards me. Um, the dust storm was at least forty stories high. Um, and, and it was faster than me, um, cause it, it caught me and knocked me out. So, and, you're, um, saying, so you're saying the dust storm after the, okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you're just getting on the channel, we're talking about the nine 11, um, uh, situation that happened, you know, with the buildings coming down, um, Elvin is, is telling us that he was in front of the building, uh, when that, with the first plane hit. Yeah, no, when the first plane hit. I was at work. Okay. Um, as the building, then the um second building got hit. I seen this all through my to my office, my office where I was working at, and um and then I was I, I walked like seven minutes mm -hmm. for my job to work trade something when and and I as I was standing in front of in front of the, the World Trade Center, mm -hmm. like a block, it came down. And and when it came down, the uh, the the breeze and all the dust and the smoke, um, right. it was powerful, and it chased me for two blocks, and it hit me and knocked me out. And the fire and the rescue team found me like four or five hours later. I was knocked out the whole four hours, five hours. I don't remember anything. Man, that's crazy, man. Well, you know, it's it's definitely a blessing that you definitely um you made it out of that. You know, and uh, you know you survived that storm. You know, um, well, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, man. You know, um, it, you, I know you're grateful for for the stuff. I'm sorry, surviving that. You know, um, that's definitely uh, crazy. Listen, let me let me just go forward. You know, and and talk a little bit more about your graffiti um, experience. So, you've been doing graffiti for how long? Started doing graffiti when I, in 1976. I was nine years old. Okay, okay. So let me bring, let me put a picture in front of you, and I'm going to ask you what comes to your mind when you see this picture. Now, I've already explained it to the people, but I want you to explain to the people what comes into your mind when you first see this picture. Wow. Um... You know, a lot of people, that, that, when it comes to graffiti, Mr. Maurice, there's a lot of different styles. You have people that, you know, and after 12 o'clock, they go to the yards and they tag on the outside of trains. Um, I was a tagger that will tag inside the trains. When people was going to work, going to school, I would do this um, every day. And, um, and it, it, it felt good when five days later, the train comes, I go inside the car and I see my name. I mean, that was like the thrill. That, that was like the, really the biggest thrill. You write your name and then you see it again. 
And the more you write your name on the train, it becomes to a point that every train that goes by, you you would you wrote on all the cards. And, and and we did this a lot. We did this every day. Every day, um, right? Every day, every day, all now, day, every day. I also um, remember. I also remember being chased by police. Uh, <laughs> you know, when you down in those chip train uh, things there, you know, um, you know, just like they depicted in the movie B Street. You know, what's up? Step your step your shirt up. I am unlimited is in the building. Um, I have Elvin. Elvin, what they used to call you back in the days? Um, uh, when it, I mean, as far as like graffiti or dancing. What was your boogie name? Your graffiti name. My my, my boogie name was El Boogie, and my graffiti name was El Bing, which is Elvin in Spanish. My grand my grandmother used to call me El Bing, like El Bing, but. And all my friends, my name is Elvin, but she didn't speak any English. So I I just like the way it sound, and I wrote it the way I, I perceived it to be. So El Bing is really Elvin, you know? Right. And right. um and then it was a long name, and then I abbreviated it. Instead of writing El Bing, I wrote I started writing L112 because 112 Street my rhymes with L. So those are about two names, Maurice. L one twelve and L and L Bing. And dancing was L Boogie. Right, right. Got you, got you. Wow, that's that's a great thing, man. You know, you you know, uh mine was Bamboo. And um, you know, that was um, I was with the Zulu Nation back then. I remember I remember seeing that tag bamboo up back in the days. Yes, sir. I, I remember the, that. I, I'm the, there's only two bamboos. One is Spanish and there's one is me. And that's the black one and the Spanish one. And that's it. I never, nobody else have claimed that name. Wow. And, uh, you know, you know, it's something that I cherish for a long time. A lot of people wonder why I put it on the show. It sounds like this. It sounds like that. But when I think of bamboo, I think of strength. I think of the bamboo stick. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't think about the easy wide of the paper. No, none of that. I think about the bamboo stick. And I think it, you know, when I think about that, I think about my life, you know, um, a, a bamboo stick, you can, it'll, it'll go this way and that way and this way, but it'll never break. Never and, break. and so, you know, I, I, that's why I, I'm so adamant about that name and people have been calling me that name for many years. They're still calling me that name, you know, so it's all good. Um, I like, I like the name and I remember seeing the name and it, it really is a nice name and I understand your definition. I mean, the first thing will, that will come through someone's head is, "Oh, bamboo, he's rolling a joint or whatever." No. Yeah. I'm from Puerto Rico, and right, right behind the house, we have um streams, and we have bamboo, and I know just how tough they are, Mr. Maurice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you. So you know already how strong they are, right? Yes. You can build houses with bamboo sticks. Yes. You know, which yes. is amazing. Which is definitely amazing, man. So listen, you know, th you know, this is a great conversation. Um, let me, I'm gonna throw something else at you. We're gonna get back to the graffiti. Actually, um, let's stay on the graffiti for a second, okay? When I show you this picture, right? You, you, you know, it, it shows a lot of different things. It shows a history, the movie B Street that I was in, and um, right there is uh, Ramon. Um, you know, I mean, Kumo D. I mean, this was a full cast movie. Um, a lot of people uh, was in it, and we're going to get back to that. But what I want to do is I want to showcase something about you, right? And uh, I was, like I said, I was on the internet, and I was looking for things. You know, I'm a guy, kind of guy. I'm always looking for things and, and trying to see uh, what's good and what's what's uh, what's real and what ain't real. Um, so I came across your page, and um, let me just uh, come out of this other thing here, All right? And yeah. uh, is that it right there? Yeah, I see. It says El Rodriguez, and it has my my um my old rock steady partner, Fast Feet. Now that's your old rock steady partner. Yeah. Um. Well, I I was a floor master. Um. Jeffy Fontanez is a martial arts fighter. Um. Slash B boy. I mean, tremendous dancer, and um, and um, he's won eleven straight championships in martial arts. Um, he's a great person. He's a great. He's a very good friend of mine. We both was raised in East Harlem. Both our parents were born on a 119th Street and Second Avenue. 
across the street from the Renegade building. His uncle was um, the, the president, Mono, which was my father's best friend. And um, yeah, a few of my members were in that movie, B Street, and auditioned. I also was auditioning for that movie also in 1982. And um, it's, 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 um, it's the... When it comes to B-Boy movies, B Street is the heart that, that started everything. It keeps it, keep, keep it pumping. Yeah. We had no idea how important it was going to be back then. But um, the guys that were on the cast of B Street, I got nothing but respect. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's no, my I'm boy not... Delta, Delta and Coles. Okay, okay. They're graffiti artists? Yeah, very much so. Um, Coles is from the South Bronx. And um, the guy that you see bending over there, his name is Delta. That's my boy, Jerry Mays. And um, Bomb 5, that was for um, Jazzy J's on birthday. Um, they're going to have a hip-hop party every year at 759 Allenton Avenue. Did you, so, say, um, did you say Pose? Ja Jazzy J. No, no, this guy here. Oh yeah, well that's the the, the the graffiti is done by Coles, Anthony Feliciano. Okay. And that's his partner that's bending over. His name is Delta. Delta was born in Spanish Harlem in my neighborhood. But Delta, I mean, these these guys have been doing graffiti since like 1978. Non-stop. Um very dedicated. They helped me very much when I when I got when I started doing my comeback. Um Coles, Delta, Parker, there's some bomb five. Some guys um really re reached out to me with showing me love. And um and I started getting better and better again. You know, I started in 2017. The right. World Trade Center took me out of commission from 2001 to 2016. I was off the map. Right. I right, mean, right. I mean, maybe one day um me I would discuss it with you. You know, right. um, cause you know, they, they, you know, but um, but 2017, I began my comeback and Coles, wait, Delta. Wait, 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 you said something was off the map. You saying something what happened? Something happened? Yeah, well, um, from 2001 to 2000, from that date, September 11th, I forgot everything. So if I danced, if I drawed and colored, um, my study habits for school, um, my appearance. The way I talk, everything, um, you know, a shockwave injury to the brain. I mean, it, it's it's difficult. I mean, and and all of this happened in nine eleven. You saying? Yeah, September eleventh, it began, and um, and it took sixteen years for me to to begin to study my brain, study what was going wrong. To I had to learn to dance again. I forgot how to dance. I, I would cry. I would go to parties and people would be like, everybody want to see me dance. Everybody know me for dancing. And they come on, Elvin, dance. Come on, Elvin. Come on, Elvin. And I was so embarrassed because I forgot how to dance. And it took me several years, like from like 2013, 2014 to 2017 to begin to walk. The way a baby learns how to walk, that's, what, it, that's what, I, I, what I had to do in order to dance. I had to join the gym. I had to lose 90 pounds. I had to study footage. I had to reach out to, you know, close friends, Wiggles, Maze, Fable. I would reach out to guys, um, people from the West Coast I reached out to. But, you know, it took a lot of um, the love you feel from another B-boy to a B-boy, that genuine love. The more I felt it, the more I began to grow. And, um... You know, it's 2021. I've been, you know, three, three and a half years training. I mean, I, I think I got pretty good again, you know, but um, I'm still training. And um, it's not like I'm, I'm trying to do like battle young boys. No, like I'm past that. All I want to do is to, I lost, I want to be able to do, just do the same exact thing I was doing in 1978, 82 and replicate it. And show it again because I, I lost a lot of footage. Um, well, so let me, let me say this, man. I mean, I understand that, but this is this is why you're here today, right? Because you know, um, there's certain people that you know we uh, put on this platform to give them praise and give them um, their flowers, and you are one of the people today 
we're going to give you your S your, 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 um, um, your praise for the contribution that you put into hip hop and um, break dancing and just the whole culture. Because a lot of times, a lot of people do not give the, 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 the praise, the flowers. You know, today is your day, my brother. Today is your day, Elvin. Man, I'm okay. flattered. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, I'm a little emotional and I'm not gonna show it right now. But nah, I mean, it's those good. words, those words mean a lot. You yeah, know, I, it means, and, 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 and coming from a man like you, you know what I'm saying, who was there day one, and, and you very highly respected, Maurice. Um, so to hear that from someone like you, it does make me feel really good. It's not going to make me stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to continue this. This is my path for life, Maurice. I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't want to work in a bank. I want to work, I want to be within our culture. Um, I get along with the younger generation. Um, and, 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 and doing art every day keeps me alive. That's one, that's a therapy. I have a, a program for this shockwave that I, that I suffered from because the doctors didn't help me. Right. You know, I didn't get the, the help that I, that I wanted. And, um, you know, it, it's, I don't want to like sway off the topic from the B-boy graffiti. We we would we would talk another no, time in depth. No, no, I'll no. answer anything you want me to answer about it. Straightforward, the truth. Yeah. No. But, no, um, no. Let me tell you something. First of all, let me just let me just first of all take this time right now to continue to give you your your um your flowers, brother. You know, and and let me just tell you this is because um first of all, a lot of people don't know from where we come from. A lot of people don't understand the hurt and the pain that we've come from from that from that point in time of life um what was going on in the communities how we had to band together you know a lot of people that you know they, they, all of this new hip-hop and and the, the hip-hoppers that are not respecting the old school and not um big enough the old school you know we got country music out here that the country singers are respected but the old school rappers are not respected the old school b-boys are not respected and that's why i'm putting this platform up and it's not just we're going to have the old school. We have the new school here, too, as well. My man Shock Life is over there in New, York, New Jersey. we got some young dancers. Um, they do the, the kids with the happy feet, the kids that do the, um, yeah. um, uh, you know, the bone uh, breaking, the bone, uh, and all that good stuff. And so we're connected with these guys. I love it. I love it. I and love they, it. They're going to definitely be on the platform. But they have to understand is that it came from somewhere. And it came from people like me, people like you that was in that was around in the beginning and so therefore today is your day we're giving you your accolades today and we're going to be sending you something too as well um you know as a as a um you know um as a thank you for the things that you've done uh for the community so let me let me just um go through one thing and let me put up another picture and, and let me ask you what do you think about this when you see this <laughs> Honestly, it reminds me of in the morning when we was going to school. Um, me and my friends, we always met at 110th Street on Lexington. And we didn't go on the train until it was at least six, seven of us. And, um, yeah, we would dance on the train. Um, we put the hat out, you know, make some money. Um, a good friend of mine is John Rich, was always with me from the float, ma um, float master committee. And, um, he was really the pioneer. I mean, um, John Rich, and I've done it. I've done it plenty of times. There was ways we could make money when we was younger, and we would go downtown to Central Park, the Fountain, on the trains, and we would dance and we would make money. You know, um, and it, it, that's that's what this picture reminds me of. Yeah, my and, friends. You, and the thing about it, you see the box, the radio. Yeah. Yeah. You know, JVC radio, yeah, 100 watts. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. And so, you know, the reason, one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up and, and letting this, putting this out here, because I don't know if anybody has really given hip hop as much love as it deserves. And, you know, um, like I said, I come from the essence from the, 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 I used to be a DJ before and I used to be a rapper before. You know what I mean? So I remember Karen, my brother had a whole bunch of crates of uh, records and, you know, Cooley, Cooley B from Yonkers. You know, we you know we used to pull the big giant speaker, the big bass speaker and go set up at the park and, 
you know, take the power from the, the power, uh, the, mm -hmm. the light pole and uh, connect it. And by any means necessary, we was going to play some music. And it was just something that we were doing. And it was in and it was it was powerful. It was, I, you know, it's hard to explain. It's different. Like today, you look at today, the times have changed. Times have changed, man. And if there's anybody that's young out here right now, you know, I'm, I'm, my heart goes out to you because this era that you're living in right now is, is to me far more dangerous, far more um, misguided than, 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 than we have been. Um, and when I say misguided, I don't think that people cherish friendship as much. And there's just a lot of people that don't know how to deal with rejection. And uh, so that's what we, you know, we're dealing with in our communities. But listen, let me ask you another question. I'm going to go keep going forward. Um, um, how long have you, um, have you done it? Not how long, but have you done, have you danced for anybody again? Have you danced for any crews or anything like that? Um, I'm currently the the president of the Floor Master Tots, which is a, a, a youth group. Um, I just grabbed the reins from, um, DJ Ski Jump, who's a a, a b boy pioneer from the early seventies, um, he created the Floor Masters, and um, for the young kids in the block, like myself and my friends, they made a crew for the kids called the Floor Master Tots. Um, I became a member in nineteen seventy seven. I was ten years old, and um, honestly, man, I, I, you know, I was unbeatable. I yeah. mean. I mean, I mean, if, if if anyone feels you know differently about it and says when I was dancing back then, um, you know, people were scared about um, go against me. Um, I I, but I started, you know, the electric boogie started seventy seven. But um, I was I was locking watching Soul Train like in seventy four when I was like eight years old. Um, I was a good locker. I I, I did the robot dance. Right. I watched a lot of Soul Train when Mr. Michael Cafani had Soul Train, um, and I mimicked how they dance, and I just added a little bit of our flavor because these are guys that was this was Motown disco era, um, before hip hop, so I had a little head start when Electric Boogie came out. I was already known for locking and for doing the robot and for mime, um, and I I, I learned everything myself. I would, my mother knows, I would stay in front of that mirror of my house right. all day and just look at my, and practice yeah. all day right. and wait for a jam and then go out in the jam and then, you know, battle for the fun of it. You know how we did. We, we battled guys for the fun of it. Yeah, no, nah, it was definitely, um, it was definitely a time that, you know, you can remember and a time we can cherish, you know, um, I, uh, do you remember, do you remember this guy? Oh yeah, 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 and he and he actually is a very talented dancer. Um, he's into the graffiti. Um, I used to hang out with his cousin, which is a female. She's a film producer right now. Um, yeah, I've known him for a long time, and um, he was one of the guys. You know, like it was hard. I mean, to get thrust into like the Hollywood scene at such a young age. I mean, what we was doing was looked down upon. But he, was, he wasn't, it was, looked, we were looked down upon, but, you know, he would, Lee wasn't really a really good dancer. You know what I'm saying? He was just the person that they they gave for the TV show, you know, and a lot of us, you know, felt like we were a little bit better than him. But, you know, <laughs> but, you know, that's that, that jealousy, you know, like, well, how's he got the spot and we don't got it, you know? And, um, but I remember him, you know, being with him on the set and um, really cool guy. You know, we ate lunch together. You know, they give us these vouchers so we can go and uh, go into the city and, and, and eat lunches and stuff like that. But nah, this is a very cool guy. You know, I kind of remember him when he, when he was younger. Uh, maybe you remember him in this one. Uh, check it. Take a look.
A few ways. I mean, we used to jump on the fire escape. We we built like you know we put we we collect mattresses, and you know from the fire escapes we would jump off, and um also the main thing we would do we would like we we would learn how to do gymnastics. So if we fell, we fell on our mattress. So we had a lot of guys who um a lot of the break dancers really improved their skills with yeah. cardboard boxes and mattresses. I mean. We didn't have we didn't have we we didn't have indoor places where we could dance and you know so we had to like live up get things off the land mattresses cardboard box and uh, this this I, I would practice my back my backhand flips and 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 some a, a couple of moves on this mattress but um it was that mattress was a toy whenever someone discarded a mattress in the seventies. That was our toy. Um, if you threw out a carpet, that was our toy. And uh, we used our toys to do what we love. We love to dance. And um, gymnastics was a big part of the dancing. And that's definitely what this reminds me of. I could give you a block, 117th Street between Person Pleasant. Um, we had abandoned buildings in 117 Person Pleasant. And besides graffiti and b boying, we my block we had a, we had a pigeon coop. We had like eight hundred birds, and um, that's that's what this picture reminds me of, Mr. Maurice. Yeah, man, that that's a uh, I don't know about you, but every time I look at things like that, I get like a chill, you know, because it it seems so surreal, and I think about how far we've come, you know, and. Uh, you know, a lot of people did not make it, you know, but, you know, um, with the most high blessings that we have made it and we are here to tell a story. Yes. And that's another thing. There, what happens when people are not here to tell a story? You know, that is, that's when the, our history dies. And so in order for us to, to continue with our history, we, we have to keep alive you know what we're doing and that's again this is what the platform is here for and uh you know um yeah that's about it elvin and, and like i said today you know we're um you know we were giving elvin his accolades you know for you know the positive things that he's done for the um hip-hop culture and we appreciate you brother we really do and thank uh, you very much you know we appreciate you we love you we we we, we we respect you and we honor you today because can't nobody else gonna do it, goddammit. I mean, it's really appreciated and um you know it, it's it's I've, I've been involved with this, you know, my whole life, um, Mr. Maurice, and um later on, when <laughs> the discussion is over, you know, I'm I'm my eyes are gonna water up because it does mean a lot. Um uncelebrated pioneers. Yes, these, yeah. are, these are people that don't have their, their they they didn't get their just due for their contributions. Either you know they changed the professions, they could have passed away, they could have moved to a different state. Um, I lost a lot of friends, you know, on the streets. You know, my original b boy partner David Vasquez. Um, we did something for um Africa Butter back in the days. We came out in the back of his album, um, and and. My partner and I, we were Electric Boogie Masters, but my partner was chubby, but he could move, you know? And um, a lot of people don't know who David Rasquez is. I'm sure Larry Love knows who he is, Rocksteady knows who he is. 
And um, you know, that's my that was my my first b boy partner as far as dancing. And I lost my own graffiti partner, was Papa. We had a, our graffiti crew was Boys in War, um, and um, BC One, which was which is a member. He's like a big legend graffiti artist now. Like we we back together, talk. We, we're gonna do some projects together and um. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm I'm not the only one that lost people, Maurice. Um, my condolences that goes out to your friends that never yeah. got the knowledge that they deserve, you know. And yeah. um, I. I no, that's a fact. I mean, I I am one of them, um, but just recently I I got um, I got a um, an award, uh, maybe a couple of years ago from um, Adobe, uh, for my contribution to hip hop, and uh, break dance, and you know that came out of nowhere. Um, I would think that you know my people would come together and say, you know what, you did, you know, you did some good stuff, and we let's honor you. But let me tell you something. I don't. I don't feel bad about that because a lot of stuff that I did, I I did it from my heart. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm trying to say this culture of of hip hop that we have that we're sitting on right now and everyone's making money off of. It goes deeper than what you guys think. Graffiti. Just think of this: graffiti artists, bunch of graffiti artists hanging together, right? All of them have a backpack on. They're hanging together. They know each other. They're, they, you know, they maybe have a single parent at home, and the conversations around graffiti back then, the, you know, the conversations around um, electric boogie, you know, how to tick, t- how to do the um, ticks, talks, and and pantomimes and waves, and trying to get new moves, and trying to look at Fred Astaire. Look at all these old movies and trying to make a move out of um, these uh, uh, um, old school people, you know, and that was some of the things that we did in order to make up our moves. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a real interesting uh, situation and definitely a great topic. Yes, I agree. So, you know, uh, hip hop has come a long way. Hip hop has-, has come a long way and, um, Business, business has integrated into hip hop. I mean, you know, while we did for fun, you got people making hundreds of millions. I mean, big business right now. Um, no, big business because they they they've taken that uh, break dancing and that electric boogie style, and they they're still selling it. Actually, it's going to be on the Olympics. The break dancing, I think. I don't think the electric boogie will be on there, but the break dancing, I think, is going to be on there. Yeah. And, yeah, and we, we're going to be interviewing the people from that, um, from those shows, and we're making connections with those people as well. Um, awesome. When you, yeah, when, when you see this picture, what do you think? Roxy's. That was like, well, um, yeah, Roxy's when um, 1983, I mean, um, Let the Boogie was already out for like four or five years, six, seven years, whatever. But this era was definitely... um. 1983 years, Roxy's. Um, I know who both crews are. Badly, you know. Um, I, I'm gonna go for Rock Steady. Um, but I got love I, on both sides right now. I, I know. Um, this was an iconic battle. Um, it showed. It showed a lot. I, when I watched this movie, this scene, I felt like the essence was like it was genuine. This is exactly how the batters were. The crowds came around. Um, you didn't want nobody for the next crew dancing better than you. And you your homeboy. He came with his homeboys. Um, it was a fun time. And um, this particular battle, this was in the, the movie B Street. And um, but this is how it looked. If you went to Roxy's, um, if you went to the fun house, um, there's numerous clubs, Palladium, Roseland, 1018s. Um, Harlem World, it had that essence in the early 80s, you know, and it was always a crowd. Yep. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was always a crowd, you know, and, and you know, I think you became, I think people became stars after, after stuff like this, you know, in your, yeah. own, in your own communities. And, and, you know, I just know that, you know, a lot of people, you know, 
really um well for me i you know one thing about me in, in hip-hop let me take this down um one thing about me with hip-hop is that um one of the problems that i found that was going on was that a lot of people was not willing to leave the hood and um and and make a move to go to the next town similarly in yonkers it was like that you know, people weren't really energized to go to New York. And, um, you know, there was a bit of laziness, you know, looming. But, you know, eventually I got a few of the guys to come down and we did audition for the movie Beach Street. And um, um, they, you know, uh, and, and, and so that went well. And, um, you know, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a positive thing you know, to, to be able to um, to be in that, that movie and, and be a part of it. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm doing something at the same time while I'm talking to you, so don't mind me. Um, mm -hmm. So before we even get, get back into stuff, let's uh, take a little break, a little commercial break. And um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to um, take a minute and I'm going to go back to this girl, Naya Nicole. Naya Nicole is a young lady that is an up and coming artist and we support we support our artists artists and we, we try to give them you know enough um um notice so that they can you know get out there and, and become a lot famous than they are now um so what we're going to do uh we're going to play her video how about that hey um uh elvin you got a little bit of time yes yes all right hang out with me man um I'm going to um, run down this, uh, get this stuff here. Um, but obviously we're, we're having a little technical difficulty, but that's all right. We're going to delete this and we're going to edit it out. So um, I'm not, I'm not a Norwest Maurice. Okay. No problem. I appreciate you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit more about what you're doing now. Um, basically the main, um, Every day I do art, dance, draw, um, film, photograph, and um, exercise, diet, practice dancing. Um, this this is something that I do every day. I don't let one day pass by. But if, if it's 11.59 p p.m., I got a minute left. I haven't done nothing. I'll pick up a pen and I'll tag my name on anything that's right next to me, piece of paper, newspaper um i have not missed a day of doing art and i consume myself every day with art and specifically the arts that that i love graffiti drawing dancing hip-hop um being a comedian we used to snap on each other um anything that was in our culture growing up roller skating mm -hmm. um Dancing in mommy's party, you know, you dance, you dancing into to Marvin Gaye, Babby White, you know, so it, it wasn't all Electric Boogie. Like before Electric Boogie came, I, I was doing other things before that. And um, I did, I made a documentary. I felt, um, I felt like I was a celebrated pioneer. I was gone from 2001 to 2017. So that wasn't nobody's fault, but situation I, I had to deal with. But being away for so long, you know, some people try to act like they didn't remember me. There was like one person only, really. So I that that was like like my motivation to like. Wait, are you saying you to, was locked up? <laughs> no, from two thousand and one to two thousand seventeen, I would talk to that on, on the side. But a shockwave injury, I forgot how to dance. I forgot art. Oh, right, so right. when I say I wasn't around, it wasn't. I, I'm not saying that I was incarcerated. Oh, okay. Right, right. You right. know. Right, you mentioned. I'm just saying right. from physically. You know, because I have scar tissue in my heart. I have scar tissue in my brain. I have scar tissue in my lungs. And that was all caused by the World Trade Center. Um, You know, living with scar tissue in your brain, your heart, and your lungs is, is, is difficult when no one believes you and you do, and you fighting this for 17 years. Um, Gradually, once I saw my, I started losing my weight. I started looking like myself again and dancing like myself again. People started, but oh, now I remember you, you know. But it's like one person who who tries to stay stuck. Like I don't remember you. 
So it, it makes you feel like, you know, you are celebrated, like you're not recognized. And um, I've, I I know I was there before day one. You know, like Curtis Blow knows me. Before he dropped his first joint, my arm, I was working in, Pol in Polydor. I used to do Electric Boogie, and, and, and Curtis Blow put money on my hat. Before he dropped his first his first hit record, you know what I'm saying? So Curtis Blow, no, he's from Harlem. I'm from Harlem, but I know all these, I know people from from Curtis Blow. But um, being involved when Curtis Blow drops that first album, for him to give me that album like three months before it was released to mm -hmm. Elmer Rodriguez, you know what I'm saying? Like, so being being a part of some people in this hip hop history, like Africa Babada, I came on the back of this album. He knew how I danced, you know. Um, but there's there's certain people that try to act like, oh, I don't remember you, or they don't want to give you the shine because they want that shine. I'm not a selfish person. I mean, I did a documentary, um, and the documentary was on everybody but me. I was fine with the producer being a producer, getting all the information. But that's other guys I feel are very uncelebrated, which came out of the documentary. You know, I got um Jerry Fontanez was on the, was on the documentary. Um, John Flo, Master Rich, Jerry Mays, very talented. He's a five element specialist. Um, Bomb Five, Rocksteady, TBB. Um, he's a b boy dancer. Um, graffiti artist, jazz. Um, I got um, I have a lot of people. The ski jump. I got Drac from the Floor Masters. I got Hollywood DJ Hollywood. Um. There's a lot, but I, I feel that these guys, you know, me being absent from 2001 to 2017, and for them to not be absent and to do what I'm doing now for those whole 17 years, you know, so they got to get their just dues. I have, I'm, I feel like I'm earning mine again. Well, let me um, tell you, no, I let me tell you this. First of all, um, I pick people for my organic reasons. And and to me, I believe that you deserve you deserve to get your flowers. I'm not worried about anybody else, right? And, and understand this: this platform is going to be seen by many different people that's in the business. That's that that, and also, um, this week we have Little Rodney C from the uh, Funky Four Plus One More. He'll be coming on. So you're wow. a, you're a part of history right now, okay? You are a part of history, so you might as well. Um, you know, take a bow because first of all, uh, my platform is going to be continuous. It's going to go on for a minute and um, we're not going to stop at all. Okay. We're definitely not going to stop at all. Um, we, we got a lot more stuff in store. Um, we got a lot more projects in store. We want you to be a part of it. And, you know, like I said, we appreciate you for coming in and, and, and just taking the time right now, you know, out of your schedule to do be here right now. Um, so no, we definitely, uh, are definitely appreciative of, of you. And so one thing that we'd like to do, um, uh, being that, um, you know, it's, uh, it should be, uh, I mean, we have, we have a young lady, her name is Mars. And, you know, I know a lot of people that, that, uh, come on my channel. You already know who she is. Oh my God. We got, um, my brother, he, uh, um, you know, a guy named Dino. Yeah, but um, which I know a few Dinos. Um, which Dino from which borough? Spanish. I know, Dino. I know a Dino from Harlem, and I know a Dino from Boston, Massachusetts. A Dino back in the days. I know a Dino from back in the days in Harlem. I grew up with Dino. Um, his name is um Antoine Dino, but his nickname is Dino. I'm not sure if it's the we talking about the same gentleman. Okay. Okay. All right. Maybe. Maybe you might not. Maybe. Oh, you you to, are you talking about Dino from Rocksteady? Um, I don't. Dino D E N O. Um, I don't think it was. He was. I don't know if he was with Rocksteady. Okay. Are you saying that? Um. You okay? Maybe. All right. So you know what? Let me make. If you this. show me a picture. I might be able to. You know, to like zoom right into it. Right, 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 right. Um, but there was there was a Dino that I grew. He was a graffiti artist that grew up in um West Side, and he was down with Rocksteady from the beginning. And then I know another Dino that grew up in my projects, 
that he was a DJ and a dancer. And then I know a Dino who's a, a floor, the floor lords. All right, this, that was this, a b-boy crew from Boston, Massachusetts. They was they was they was they was good. This is lean, this is, lean skin order. Okay, this is Dino right here. Oh shit! Damn, I can't really point. It looked familiar. You can't really I'm, tell, right? Yeah, I can't really tell. Yeah, he's a breakdown electric boogie guy. Um, but um, you know, he he was with me back in the day. He didn't he didn't go as far back as I went. I went back all the way to the to the essence, but he went back. He definitely went back. Um, yeah. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let me. Um, we're gonna take a commercial break, and uh, we're going to um, show love to um, uh, some of the people that uh, have supported us um, in our in our trying times. You know, you know, we've had COVID recently, and you know, how'd you make it through COVID anyway? Um, I didn't take one day off. I was filming. I was filming the documentary. Um, the documentary is called "On Celebrated Pioneers." B boys make some noise. It's seventy-three minutes long. We begun this project like a month before the lockdown. So like we was we was filming. We, we was already filming, interviewing. Then the lockdown happened, and then we had people that were going to interview from Atlanta, on um, on New Jersey. California, um, and the lockdown just stopped everything, but um, it didn't stop me. I didn't want to stop doing this project. You know, right. I, I, I would travel, I would um, make meetings, I would go to people's houses, do the interviews. Um, it actually came out, you know, for my first production, I think it came out, you know, decent, but, that, but that's how I spent my, um, the, the entire COVID lockdown. I also began my graffiti again. Um, I felt that I lost a lot of footage from back in the days. So I wanted to um, go bombing again and take photographs and save it. So um, during the lockdown, um, it was sad because I, you know, I lost so many people was, was you know, um, DJ, um, Mr. Yoda, rest in peace, you know what I'm saying? Like, big, part, big part of Zulu. I was, a, I was a Gestapo when I was younger. Um, mm -hmm. I was in a uh, Dice's chapter, bodyguard country. Um, but I was, you know, I hung out with, with Zulu Nation, and we and, and and there was quite a few hits. I mean, I don't think there was nothing bigger than Yoda's. But the um, contributions that he did, connecting the arts and the community. That's the thing. If you Zulu, you 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 know what it is. Um, the Zulu Kings. That's how they was birthed. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, it was a trying time. I lost, you know, I lost a lot of, you know, dear friends of mine. And um, but I didn't stop what I was doing for a day. You know, um the, the, we 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 completed the documentary. Um we um it was it was showcased in Las Vegas on uh, in August. They the, they loved it. I won an award for producer. I came out and um I filmed someone's music video and did a cameo dance appearance. Mm -hmm. I won an award for that, you know, but, you know, the awards were, I won these awards on the West Coast. I got respect for the West Coast, you know, like, I have a lot of, lot of love for the West Coast. Um, Mr. Kafadi from Soul Train, like, he's a big, he's a big support system for me. He encourages me to, um, to keep doing what I'm doing, you know, and, um, you know, I'm sorry for everyone that, 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 that's been struggling with this COVID. Um, but the arts have kept me afloat, you know, mentally, spiritually, um, physically. And um, I'm not going to stop, Mr. Maurice. I know that's right. Mm -hmm. I know that's right, man. You know, can't stop, won't stop, you know. Um, listen, let's go to this commercial real quick. We'll come back and we'll talk to you a little bit more about um, what you're doing now. And um, what do you think about the kids now in the streets? We'll be right back after this message. Never needed no help, did it all by myself. Let it say that I'm hot shit, I pass it all well. I was down, I was booted, wanted more, I had to prove it. I just be weighing my options, fake love, can't see who my ops is. Never needed no help, 
Did it all by myself Had to say that I'm hot shit, I hot shit, oh well I was down, I was booted Wanted more, I had to prove it I just be weighing my options Fed love, can't see who my ops is I just ran up a bag Had to get off my ass Done with excuses, she love when I do it When I leave, she be mad Lifestyle can't match Till my time came fast This game is rough as they're picking and choosing I had to stay low in the back They on me, they feeling Can't give them no reason My trip, so bad if it seems like this season Oh, I can't build no fool I'm in it back on the road Late nights in the stool Swear my sauce is worth it for sure Never needed no help Did it all by myself Let it say that I'm hot shit I pot shit, oh well I was down, I was booted Wanted more, I had to prove it I just be weighing my options Fake luck, can't see who my ops is Never needed no help did it all by myself Had to say that I'm hot shit, I hot shit, oh well I was down, I was booted Wanted more, I had to prove it I just be weighing my options Fed love, can't see who my ops is Mind lost, stuck on confusion Ain't really see how I was moving Get a march, I don't know what to do with it Second loss, and I know what to do with it Future bright, you can live on the lights Take a chance, I'ma pay for that price No help, I'ma get this shit right By my lonely, I be living that life, yeah by my lonely, I be living that life Take a game, I'ma pay for that price No help, I'ma get this shit right Free smoke, I be handing out lights Get my dish and they be telling them lies These bitches be telling them lies Never needed no help I did it all by myself Let it say that I'm hot shit, I pot shit, oh well I was down, I was booted Wanted more, I had to prove it I just be weighing my options Fake luck, can't see who my ops is Never needed no help Did it all by myself Let it say that I'm hot shit, I pot shit, oh well I was down, I was booted Wanted more, I had to prove it I just be weighing my options Fed love, can't see who my ops is Never needed no help Did it all by myself Let it say that I'm hot shit, I pot shit, oh well I was down, I was booted Wanted more, I had to prove it I just be weighing my options Fed love, can't see who my ops is Never needed no help Did it all by myself Let it say that I'm hot shit, I pot shit, oh well I was down, I was booted Wanted more, I had to prove it I just be weighing my options Fed love, can't see who my ops is Yes, yes, yes. My girl Mars, she definitely doing a thing. Show love to my girl Mars. She is definitely representing. Listen, if you have any kind of videos, you have any kind of talent, we want you to give us an email. Um, we're going to put the emails in the chats. Um, we got Jody Jefferson in the building. Step your shirt up in the building. Um, I'm going to leave my email in the chat. If you guys, if there's anybody that has any talent and you have some clean music, um, feel free to reach out to me and give me your information and we will contact you and we will um, showcase your music on our show. Um, this is the direction that we're going. Um, and so we, we appreciate your, your support and your help. And listen, if you have any uh, real questions about anything, um, uh, you know, that, that is pertaining to our show, um, um, this is the morning buzz, but um, uh, uh, um, words, but that's the number right down there on the bottom. You can pick that up and, and check that out um, later on. And we can, uh, we'll, uh, hey, we'll get back to you. We'll definitely get back to you. All right. So um, let me ask you a question, brother. You, uh, you, you know, the, you see the world, what's going on in the world today. Um, you know, there's... Um, massive amounts of uh, killings going on, you know, in, in the city um, streets of New York City. Are you familiar with what's going on right now? Yeah, I mean, um, crime has risen. Um, it's in some neighborhoods, it looks desperate. Um, a lot of people talking about getting evicted, you know, I mean, there was not too many people were able to... Um, catch up on their bills during the lockdown. And now you have people getting, losing their jobs over the vaccine mandates. And um, so now the struggle is not only with like minority or impoverished families. Now you have professional police officers, firemen losing their job, their careers over these vaccine mandates. And, th and, th th and that's what's made this particular time, the crime, just over the top. I mean, you got people earning eighty thousand, ninety thousand a year, and now they own earning zero. They have children, they have families, they have car payments. I mean, so yeah, the desperation it it it, it doesn't does it's definitely not the same feeling we had when we was younger growing up, where you wake up happy. 
you know, not a problem in the world, but it's different now. And it's yeah. even different now because it's affecting people outside of the ghettos or, or slums. I mean, with the mandates, I mean, you have people have to make tough decisions and um, it's, it, it shows in the neighborhood. I mean, I, 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 I don't, at eight o'clock I'm home, you know, like you don't see me in the streets like that, you know, but it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't seem right. You know, it, it is bad. No, nah, it is it is bad. And I and I tell a lot of people I you know, when I do this this podcast, you know, I'm saying to my you know, you know, I, I give a lot of information, I'm informative. This is like it really is. And some people, you know, they don't they're not see people have um short tension spans. And when they when they when something is not as exciting as they want it to be, they automatically pull away from it. You know, it's 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 that addiction that you know that you're addicted to instead of taking the time and actually seeing in in its entirety um you know um certain videos that that are trying to um you know shoot positive into the world and that's what we're doing we're trying to shoot positive into the world and um give opportunity to young people and make a difference in this world today and that's what this channel is all about so if you um are on facebook which some of you are and, you know, if you can go over to YouTube and, and um, you know, subscribe to the channel, you know, hit that bell, you know, so that you can be the first one to get the, you know, get the notification, you know, get the videos as they come up. You know, you'll be you'll be down with us, you know, so and we'll be giving out we'll be giving out some shirts to people, um, you know, that are a part of what we're doing. So um, definitely um, on top of that. Um, yeah. So. Again, you know, we're in a, definitely in a, in a different time nowadays, and you know, children are definitely a lot more angrier. I feel, you know, than than the average, you know, um, kids. I think that they're really just trying to make it make a point. That's what I think they're doing. I think they're trying to make a point, you know, and uh, that's what I think it's all about. You know, this all of this problem that we're having with these kids. They feel just like us when we were younger. We wanted to make a point. I think they're trying to make a point, you know. And um, so, in some some senses, we have to let them have you know, be free to speak and be free to um, you know to um, direct their energy the way they you know the, the way they see fit. You know, let it out, let it out. Don't don't hold it in because when you hold it in you tear yourself up inside. And I've learned that, you know, just by being in a relationship, you know, I, I used to just be quiet, you know, and sometimes I still be quiet, you know, but when I'm quiet, that's, that's when you better watch out because, you know, I'm, I'll either break out or, you know, um, things can happen, you know? So, you know, I always tell people, don't, don't look at my face and think that this face ain't been scraped on the ground. You know, I, this face is this face is a face that has made it, <laughs> you know, this is a face that's made it through the struggles. And um, and now I'm here in this seat, giving props to and flowers to brother like Elvin and uh, people that have made a difference in, in, in the uh, communities. So, you know, we definitely appreciate you coming on, man. You know, um, there's, yeah. a lot, there's a lot of things that we, we need to do together. And I hope that we can stay in contact with each other and, um, you know, do some of these things. You know what I mean? I look forward to it, Mr. Police. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so now that I've, I don't know what happened, I think I've lost all of my my um, um, stuff over here. It has definitely wiped out. And that's what social media does. It, it wakes you up. It, you know, when you, you know, when you, when you think you got something, you ain't got nothing, you know? So um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, I'm going to talk to my uh, people in the chat and say thank you very much for coming. All of you people that are that are in the back, right? Now I know who you are, Pamela's, the Zamila's, the you know the Nita's, the you know all of you guys, and you know the Shantes, the Kias, the you know um, Maurice, the Devante, uh, Quentin, uh, Maurice Jr. I think I said that already. Um, Rhonda, Lisa, 
Um, all of these people, we, we, we wish you blessings and love. Bev, uh, Tease World, all of the people that are on the chats on a regular basis, uh, we, we wish you, you the best and I hope everything is going well with you. And if you guys, I appreciate it if you can subscribe to my channel and uh, support us. Mm -hmm. And Elvin, let me tell you something, man. You know, um, what I feel is this, is that, you know, you could have been dead, right? And to me, I think that there's a reason why God spared your life. And I think that God brought me into your life for a reason. Because see, you know what? I'm, I believe, I'm starting to believe that God orders my steps, right? The most I high orders my steps. And, and, and when I go through the internet and I pick people or I'm not calling you or something is a reason why, the energy has to be right. And the energy was right with you. And that's why I told you today is your day. And this, this video will be seen um, forever. Um, and people, you'll be able to come back to this, this, this video and show your kids that um, uh, Wendy Williams' cousin, a um, break dancer from back in the days from the movie Beach Street, has pulled you in and told you that today is your day and you get in your flowers. We appreciate you. We love you for everything that you've done for the culture. And, um, you know, that's it, man. You know, Zulu. Nietas, uh, Savage Nomads, uh, you know, all of our family, mm -hmm. familia, you know, everybody, you know, um, respect to all of you guys out there and blessings, man. Blessings, blessings on top of blessings. All right. So listen, you know, um, I got one more, I got one more um, song to go because, you know, we, we promote, you know, young people on this platform and, uh, you know, I can't do it. I can't do this alone. You know, I, I have to have, you know, um, these kind of things going on, man. You know what I'm saying? Because there's more kids coming up and they have, we have to show them love. And I'm, and even if they are those kind of kids um, that are different, you know what I mean? Those are the ones, I want the different ones, the ones that are different, the ones that, that are into art, into dancing and just different. You know why? Because I was different, ladies and gentlemen. I was different. And, you know, you, you people say, well, what are you doing up there? You're doing all these moves and you're doing all of this and you're looking all funny and crazy. Let me tell you something. Um, there's an art to it. There's an art to it. And I traveled on tour with Van Vada and Zulu Nation, um, you know, with um, doing this for, for, for a minute. And um, you can make money off of this, too. You just have to know how to do it. Because if you're young and you're capable of dancing, there's a certain registry that you can put your name in. And if they need someone that does break dancing, electric boogie, your name will be in that registry with your face and you will be picked. But you have to know how to go about doing it. Okay. Yes, the industry is much bigger now. People in China and Japan, these guys are doing, you, you know what I'm saying, right, Elvin? Yes. You know, they got these new shows out now, you know, but one of the problems is where's all the um, old school, um, uh, judges, you know, where's the judges at? You know, they need to have old school people judging for the new school. And and this way that we can all learn together what's going on with this bone breaking thing, what's going on with all this other stuff that we got going on. Tease World, how you doing? You missed the topic. Um, no, we just, we're just going over. Um, um, I was in the movie Beach Street and uh, we were having a conversation about, you know, uh, the history of hip hop and, and where it started and how it started. And, and some of the people like Elvin here that's on my platform, um, he has, he has um, dedicated his life, you know, for the culture. And, 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 and what we're doing on, in, on this platform, like it really is, is we're taking the time, right? Taking the time to pull somebody from their home and, tell them listen today is your day today is your day you made a difference in somebody's life and we appreciate you and we love you for that and so that's what this 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 platform is is to give the flowers and respect 
to the ones that have not been given respect to for over the years, the ones that have built this city, the ones that have put each cement and, and, and fought for, this, for, for the young people that are out here now that don't have no respect for the old school. These are the ones that really should be lifted up, not foot or neck, okay? And so maybe we can use this as a platform is understanding that all of you old school people out there, whether it be, um, uh, you know, Kumo D, um, whether it be uh, Drake, whether it be any of you guys, when you listen to this, you understand that there is something that you guys are missing. And as long as you're missing that, you'll never go far. When you build a building, you have to build the foundation first. You cannot just build a building. The foundation is what makes the building stand strong. And if you're taking the foundation from the building, you're gonna collapse just like it's happening now. All right, and you guys remember that in the hip hop world. Yes, very well said. Yeah, and so um, with that, after we um, come after this, we're gonna say uh, peace and blessings to um, um, El, uh, um, uh, to my brother here, and, and we'll be right back. Um, this is Naya Nicole. This is her new other new song. It's called Eleven. You know, just uh, yeah, listen, rock with me. We'll be right back. Ever since I was 11, I've been doing my thing just writing Trying to get it down on a piece of paper Coming up with melodies, was it working well? Sort of, kind of, wasn't used to it, but now I've got it I've been thinking lately about it And I think I nearly made it So, gonna keep on going Gonna stay original is what I'm hoping Nothing's ever gonna stop me Nothing's gonna get in my way So I'm working real hard Never been this serious about my own art Taking what's mine and I'm gonna get it And what's mine is gonna be lifted What I'm really trying to say is I've been steady on my grind I ain't wasting no time Trying to say it. I've been studying on my grind, I ain't wasting no time. No. Ever since I was the double one, been hitting them stages like it was nothing. Doing it all, just trying to get down.
Yes, 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 yes. Blessings, blessings. That was um that was Naya Nicole, and uh, she has her new single. Um, check out. She has some more music. You can check her out on YouTube and all the platforms like iTunes and uh, Spotify and all of that. And you can check her out on that. We'll leave a um, uh, a link down in the comments for you to link onto her page. Okay, man. We're back to you, man. Elvin, how you doing today, man? You all right? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Nice song. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, you know what? You know what? Try to. You know. You never know. That could be the next uh, uh, hit star right there. You know. You know what's that girl that died in the plane? Um, I, was just, I, was, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. The one that just got in the plane. That's um. I don't know why I forgot her name. Yeah, I should be, I mean, I should she, be shot. Aaliyah. Aaliyah, yeah, yeah, yeah. She might be. This girl might be the new Aaliyah, and she's she's right here on our show. Um, we also have Yonkers Lady, um, the first lady of Yonkers. We're waiting to get some music from her, too. And um, we're definitely going to be uh, putting her on. But um, I just wanted to say thank you, everybody, for tuning in, man. And uh, thank you, Elvin, for being here with us today and 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 just, you know, giving us that information and, and showing your, uh, you know, your right. views on, on, on what's going on in the world today as far as hip hop is concerned. And, the, the history behind it and you know we just appreciate all of that man. oh thank that it's very it's, it's appreciated thank you thank yeah, everyone yeah. that tuned into the show and um you know is, is it there means any way, a lot to me yeah yeah no doubt man is there any way anybody can find you do you have any platforms where you can uh, tell people where you're at yeah um i have um two social media pages on facebook um one is called B Boys and B Girl Gangster Chronicles. Um, and the second page on Facebook is also is Bronx Boogie Get Down. And um, I'm on YouTube, El Rodriguez at YouTube. I throw a lot of love my, of my graffiti and dance videos on the YouTube. And um, just to stay posted, um, this um the documentary should be on Netflix in a month, month and a half. The name of the documentary is B Boys and B Girls Gangster Chronicle. Um, our celebrated pioneers, B Boys Make Some Noise. Gotcha. And um, so that's my I'm I'm focusing a lot on screening it in New York City this time. And um I appreciate it, you know. Uh, hopefully I'm I'm I'll make sure you get you get get to watch it if you haven't seen it in, in, in the entirety yet. And um well, you know what you could do? You can, you know, give us a cut, give us a, a, a cut of it. And, um, you know, we'll uh, come, we'll come back and we'll, um, we'll play it, you know, and uh, as long as it doesn't have any strikes on it or anything like that, we're good. Yeah, you there's know? no strikes. There's no profanity used. No, no, no. It's, 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 yeah, as long as it's not, in other words, in other words, we, as long as we don't get strikes as far as like, you know, copyrighted music and stuff like that, you know, we just try to stay away from those kind of things. Okay, but, well, um, my partner's the director. I'm the producer. I'll, 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 I'll give him a call in the morning, and I'll make sure that and that that's placed in your hands. Um, yeah, and I, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. No, no, we appreciate you, brother. Definitely appreciate you. And um, you know, um, again, want to thank you for coming through, ladies and gentlemen. This has been like it really is with Bamboo and Friends. Um, until next time, you know, we'll check you out. Uh, and we'll have a new show. Um, remember, we have um, um, Rodney C from uh, Funky Four Plus One More. He'll be on. We still got a uh, Memphis Bleak. He's going to show up and he's going to perform. Wow. And uh, you know, we have a host of other people that will be coming in. Oh, we have a special guest. A special guest. Yes, Bernadette Thompson is a very good friend of mine, and she will be here. She is the. She does nails. And she's been doing nails for the stars for many years. She just got hooked up with in Jay-Z's new magazine. Um, they wrote an article on her and she will be coming up and we're going to be putting up some information about her too as well. So tune in for that. That's going to be a great show. Yes, sir. Yeah, listen, thanks again for coming. I want to thank everybody for uh, watching Like It Really Is with Bamboo and Friends. Until next time. I'll see you next time. I have a question. Peace out.
we're out of here. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Maurice. No problem, brother. Bamboo. Before we go, ladies and gentlemen, this one's for you. All right? Remember, be grateful. Be grateful. Yes, sir. Yes. Salute, hey, hey, hey. kid. Myself, I love my life, I love my kids, I love my wife, I'm positive, I try to do what's right, I respect darkness but rather live in light, yo, I love my fam, I love my mom, I love my community, I love God, I love unity, he died for you and me, I always be thankful and grateful, wouldn't you be? Sing it, Queen. Me too. Until next time, see you later.